Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. And thanks for your support. Physician Nostradamus believed that he could predict the future and published his predictions in the prophecies. Some believe they have or will come true. Who was Nostradamus? Nostradamus studied medicine and became a physician, treating plague victims throughout France and Italy. It's believed he had a psychic awakening. He began to practice the occult and make predictions of the future, which he published in the prophecies. Many people today believe his predictions have come true or will in the future. Early Life Michel de Nostradame was born on December 14 or 21, 1503, in the south of France in saint remy de Provence, one of nine children to Rainier de Estiremi and her husband Hame de Nostradame, a well-to-do grain dealer and part-time notary of Jewish descent. Nostradame's grandfather, Guy Gassinet, had converted to Catholicism a half-century earlier and changed the family name to Nostradame, in part to avoid persecution during the Inquisition. Little is known of his childhood, but evidence indicates he was very intelligent as he quickly advanced through school. Early in his life, he was tutored by his maternal grandfather, Jean de Saint Remy, who saw great intellect and potential in his grandson. During this time, young Nostradame was taught the rudiments of Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and mathematic mathematics. It is believed that his grandfather also introduced him to the ancient rites of Jewish tradition and the celestial sciences of astrology, giving Nostradame his first exposure to the idea of the heavens and how they drive human destiny. Studies At the age of 14, Nostradame entered the University of Avignon to study medicine. He was forced to leave after only one year however, due to an outbreak of the bubonic plague. According to his own account, he traveled throughout the countryside during this time, researching herbal remedies and working as an apothecary. In 1522 he entered the University of Montpellier to complete his doctorate in medicine. He sometimes expressed dissension with the teachings of the Catholic priests, who dismissed his notions of astrology. There are some reports that university officials discovered his previous experience as an apothecary and found this reason to expel him from school. Evidently, the school took a dim view of anyone who was involved in what was considered a manual trade. However, most accounts state he was not expelled and received a license to practice medicine in 1525. At this time he Latinized his name as was the custom of many medieval academics from Nostradame to Nostradamus. Combating the Plague Over the next several years, Nostradamus traveled throughout France and Italy, treating victims of the plague. There was no known remedy at the time, most doctors relied on potions made of mercury, the practice of bloodletting and dressing patients in garlic-soaked robes. Nostradamus had developed some very progressive methods for dealing with the plague. He didn't bleed his patients, instead of practicing effective hygiene and encouraging the removal of the infect infected corpses from city streets. He became known for creating a rose pill, an herbal lozenge made of rose hips, rich in vitamin C, that provided some relief for patients with mild cases of the plague. His cure rate was impressive, though much can be attributed to keeping his patients clean, administering low-fat diets, and providing plenty of fresh air. In time, Nostradamus found himself somewhat of a local celebrity for his treatments and received financial support from many of the citizens of Provence. One in 1531, he was invited to work with a leading scholar of the time, Jules Caesar Scaliger in Aigon in southwestern France. There he married and in the next few years, had two children. In 1534, his wife and children died presumably of the plague while he was traveling on a medical mission to Italy. Not being able to save his wife and children caused him to fall out of favor in the community and with his patron, Scaliger. The Occult In 1538, an offhand remark about a religious statue resulted in charges of heresy against Nostradamus. When ordered to appear before the Church Inquisition, he wisely chose to leave province to travel for several years through Italy, Greece and Turkey. During his travels to the ancient mystery schools, it is believed that Nostradamus experienced a psychic awakening. One of the legends of Nostradamus says that, during his travels in Italy, he came upon a group of Franciscan monks, identifying one as the future pope. The monk, called Felice Peretti, 
was ordained Pope Sixtus V in 1585, fulfilling the prediction of Nostradamus. Feeling he'd stayed away long enough to be safe from the Inquisition, Nostradamus returned to France to resume his practice of treating plague victims. In 1547, he settled in his hometown of Salanda province and married a rich widow named Anponsard. Together they had six children, three bo boys and three girls. Nostradamus also published two books on medical science by this time. One was a translation of Galen, the Roman physician, and a second book, the Trait de Fardmans, was a medical cookbook for treating the plague and the preparation of cosmetics. Within a few years of his settling into Salon, Nostradamus began moving away from medicine and more toward the occult. It is said that he would spend hours in his study at night meditating in front of a bowl filled with water and herbs. The meditation would bring on a trance and visions. It is believed the visions were the basis of his predictions for the future. In 1550, Nostradamus wrote his first almanac of astrological information and predictions of the coming year. Almanacs were very popular at the time, as they provided useful information for farmers and merchants and contained entertaining bits of local folklore and predictions of the coming year. Nostradamus began writing about his visions and incorporating them into his first almanac. The publication received a great response and served to spread his name all across France, which encouraged Nostradamus to write more. Prophecies By 1554, Nostradamus' visions had become an integral part of his works in the almanacs, and he decided to channel all his energies into a massive opus he entitled Centuries. He planned to write 10 volumes, which would contain 100 predictions forecasting the next 2,000 years. In 1555 he published Les Prophecies, a collection of his major, long-term predictions. Possibly feeling vulnerable to religious persecution, he devised a method of obscuring the prophecies' meanings by using quatrains rhymed four-line verses and a mixture of other languages such as Greek, Italian, Latin, and Provençal, a dialect of southern France. Oddly enough, Nostradamus enjoyed a good relationship with the Roman Catholic Church. It is believed he never faced prosecution for heresy by the Inquisition, because he didn't extend his writings to the practice of magic. Nostradamus ran into some controversy with his predictions, as some thought he was a servant of the devil, and others said he was fake or insane. However, many more believed the prophecies were spiritually inspired. He became famous and in demand by many of Europe's elite. Catherine de' Medici, the wife of King Henri II of France, was one of Nostradamus' greatest admirers. After reading his Almanacs of 1555, where he hinted at unnamed threats to her family, she summoned him to Paris to explain and draw up horoscopes for her children. A few years later, she made him counselor and physician in ordinary to King Henry's court. In 1556, while serving in this capacity Nostradamus also explained another prophecy from Century's Eye, which was assumed to refer to King Henri. The prophecy told of a young lion who would overcome an older one on the field of battle. The young lion would pierce the eye of the older one, and he would die a cruel death. Nostradamus warned the king he should avoid ceremonial jousting. Three years later, when King Henri was 41 years old, he died in a jousting match when a lance from this opponent pierced the king's visor and entered his head behind the eye deep into his brain. He held on to life for 10 agonizing days before finally dying of infection. Nostradamus claimed to base his published predictions on judicial astrology, the art of forecasting future events by calculation of the planets and stellar bodies in relationship to the Earth. His sources include passages from classical historians like Plutarch, as well as medieval chroniclers from whom he seems to have borrowed liberally. In fact, many scholars believe he paraphrased ancient end-of-the-world prophecies, mainly from the Bible, and then through astrological readings of the past, projected these events into the future. There's also evidence not everyone was enamored with Nostradamus' predictions. He was criticized by professional astrologers of the day for incompetence and assuming that comparative horoscopy, the comparison of future planetary configurations with those accompanying known past events, could predict the future. Death and Legacy Nostradamus suffered from gout and arthritis for much of his adult life. In the last years of his life, the condition turned into edema, or dropsy, where abnormal amounts of fluid accumulate beneath the skin or within cavities of the body. 
Without treatment, the condition resulted in congestive heart failure. In late June of 1566, Nostradamus asked to see, see his lawyer to draw up an extensive will, leaving much of his estate to his wife and children. On the evening of July 1st, he is alleged to have told his secretary Jean de Chavigny, you will not find me alive at sunrise. The next morning, he was reportedly found dead lying on the floor next to his bed. Most of the quatrains Nostradamus composed during his life dealt with disasters such as plagues, earthquakes, wars, floods, invasions, murders, droughts, and battles. Nostradamus enthusiasts have credited him with predicting numerous events in world history including the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon and Hitler, the development of the atomic bomb, and the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. Nostradamus's popularity seems to be due in part to the fact that the vagueness of his writings and their lack of specific dates make it easy to selectively quote them after any major dramatic events and retrospectively claim them as true. Some scholars believe he was not writing to be a prophet, but writing to comment on events of his time and the people in it. Whatever his method or intentions, Nostradamus' timeless predictions continue to make him popular to those seeking answers to life's more difficult questions. Nostradamus became famous in his own lifetime for publishing a long series of prophecies which continue to mystify, intrigue and, frankly, exasperate us to this day. The fact that he wrote in enigmatic poems, or quatrains, means that his words can be endlessly reinterpreted to fit historic, historical events. This makes trying to assess his accuracy a notoriously tricky thing to do. But what if we really squint and give him the benefit of the doubt? Did Nostradamus get anything right? 1. The death of Henry II Henry II of France was a personal acquaintance of Nostradamus, who once addressed him in a letter as the most invincible Henry King of France. Unfortunately, Henry actually turned out to be very vincible indeed, and came to a horribly painful end aged just 40. A passionate sportsman fond of hunting and jousting, Henry's active nature proved his undoing when, in the summer of 1559, he held a tournament to celebrate a recent peace treaty. During a joust with one of his young soldiers, the latter's lance shattered, driving splinters into the king's iron skull. A slow and painful death from sepsis followed, and many believe it was foretold by Nostradamus. The quatrain in question tells us the young lion will overcome the older one, that he will pierce his eyes through a golden cage, and that two wounds will ensure a cruel death. Uncanny? Perhaps. Although critics have pointed out the quatrain also says the killing occurs on the field of combat in a single battle, while Henry was accidentally slain during a playful joust. To the Great Fire of London It's worth quoting the alleged Great Fire of London quatrain in full, because it's one of the most mysterious prophecies of all. The blood of the just will commit a fault at London. Burnt through lightning of 23's the 6. The ancient lady will fall from her high place, Several of the same sect will be killed. It's tantalizing if you interpret, as some do, 23 is the 6 is 66, 20x 3 plus 6. Add to that the mention of London and references to deaths, and you can see why it's believed to, to be a prophecy of the Great Fire of London in 1666. As ever with Nostradamus, ambiguities make it hard to be definitive. The Great Fire was set off by a flame in a bakery, not by lightning, and what does the ancient lady signify? Perhaps London itself? This is one to puzzle over, even by Nostradamus standards. 3. The Coming of Adolf Hitler Nostradamus has been credited with quite a few 20th century predictions, and the rise of Adolf Hitler is often cited as one of them. And, to be fair, his writings do provoke a slight chill of recognition. From the depths of the west of Europe, Nostradamus wrote, a young child will be born of poor people. And what does this child do? He will by his tongue, seduce a great troop, and his fame will spread far beyond Europe. Another quatrain of possible significance mentions fighting close by the Hister, which is either a loose reference to Hitler, or a more mundane mention of the old name of the Danube River. Depending on your point of view, 5. The Hiroshima and Nagasaki Bombs Within two cities, Nostradamus wrote, there will be scourges the like of which was never seen. That description would certainly apply to what occurred in the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
which were devastated by atomic bombs at the end of World War II. The quatrain paints an increasingly bleak picture, foretelling famine within plague, potentially a reference to radiation sickness and the lasting disruption of war and people put out by steel, which may point to the planes which dropped the bombs. Of course, this may well have been Nostradamus talking about a literal plague affecting any potential cities, given that the man himself had first-hand experience of treating plague patients. But, again, it depends on how much you really want to believe. 5. The Kennedy Assassination The killing of President John F. Kennedy was one of the pivotal moments of the 20th century, so it's not surprising that many have scoured the works of Nostradamus for any hint of a prophecy. A commonly quoted contender is the bit that reads from on high, evil will fall on the great man, perhaps a reference to the fact he was shot from a distance by a sniper or snipers. Tellingly, the quatrain continues with a dead innocent will be accused of the deed, is this Lee Harvey Oswald, the suspected assassin who was himself shot dead soon after, and has long been regarded as an innocent fall guy? As if that wasn't enough to convince us, Nostradamus assures us the true guilty party will remain in the mist, a sentiment which countless JFK conspiracy theorists will surely agree with. In general, many of Nostradamus' prophecies include 16th-century French terms that aren't clear to most modern interpreters. Particular words could be interpreted in any number of ways, and they can be twisted easily to fit an actual event. In Nostradamus' time, for example, history referred to a geographical region near the Danube River. Most likely, skeptics argue, Nostradamus was referring to this area, not to a person. Hitler was, in fact, born near the Danube River, so many believers actually embraced this interpretation. The most compelling argument against Nostradamus' powers is that his apparent hits are the result of random chance and creative interpretation. There are nearly 1,000 quatrains, most containing more than one prediction, and all but a few are described in vague, obscure terms. Over the course of hundreds of years, it's certainly possible that some events would line up with some predictions simply due to coincidence. In fact, Nostradamus may have phrased his prophecies with exactly this in mind. Most quatrains refer to deaths, wars or natural disasters events that are sure to occur again and again throughout history. Nostradamus' esoteric style also increases the chances of a perceived hit. His metaphorical writing highlights general relationships and conflicts, not specific details. People, or possibly nations, are described as animals, major figures are referred to by their attributes. The Hitler quatrain, for example, refers to beasts ferocious from hunger, the Great One, and an iron cage, all general terms with metaphorical elements. This imprecise language does lend itself well to subjective interpretation, when the exact meaning is unclear, it's easy to plug in one's own experiences to reach some sort of understanding. This is a lot like modern horoscopes. Horoscopes typically detail things a wide range of people experience regularly, such as conflicts at work, happiness in relationships, and exciting new changes. Chances are, these predictions will line up with your life, at least some of the time. Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.